With the Boston Marathon such an integral part of the Hopkinton community, many of our residents are actively involved on race day, some as runners and others as volunteers. Tonight, we'll talk with Alicia Shambo, a former U.S. Navy medic who was working at the finish line and is here to tell us firsthand what she saw and experienced as the bombs exploded and afterward. So why don't you tell us first why you were in Boston and what you were doing at the finish line? Um, I started volunteering for the finish line two years ago um, on the committee that hands out the heat sheets, or otherwise known as the Mylar blankets. And um, they're handed out to the runners after they cross the finish line, um, just prior to get, picking up their medals, in a way to help them conserve their heat loss after finishing the marathon. So I usually help out at the beginning of the marathon, but for the last two years I've volunteered at the end. Okay, and uh, obviously this year um, it didn't turn out like you expected. No, you know, this year it started off to be a beautiful day. Everybody was comparing, you know, the weather last year was so, so warm, and we had runners dropping left and right from dehydration and uh, overheating. And this year we were all in a great mood. It was a beautiful day. It was a perfect day for a marathon. And um, we kept looking for our Hopkinton runners, and I, uh, I saw one, Michelle, and Michelle Dragsbeat came through, and the minute I saw her, the first bomb went off. And um, she said, Alicia, what was that? Now, she was walking towards me. I was looking towards the finish line because I was applying the stickers to everybody to hold on their heat sheets. At the same time, I was screening the different faces to see if I recognized any signs of dehydration or exhaustion or instability of any sort, in which case then I would grab somebody with a wheelchair and, and get that individual into the medical tent before they collapsed. So I was looking towards the finish line. Everybody else had their back to the finish line. And I, saw, I heard and I saw the smoke. And the minute I saw it, as a Navy medic, I recognized the sounds, I, I recognized the sight, and I, there was not a doubt in my mind as to what that was. Um, and Michelle looked at me and said, what was that? I said, I I'm not, at that point to her, I said, I'm not sure, just let's get out of the way. Let's just keep on walking. 10 seconds, 15 seconds later, the second bomb went off. And then I w it was confirmed. I knew right then and there uh, that we were in trouble. And so I, um, I turned around and immediately started trying to clear the sidewalk, clear the street, keep people going in the opposite direction, seek cover, um, get out of the way, because you didn't know. Was there going to be a third? Was there going to be a fourth? How far apart were they spaced? So it was at that point I just tried to get everybody out of the way. And then once the area was a little secured, I just turned around and ran towards the explosions, knowing that there was definitely injuries and knowing that I needed to be there to offer whatever assistance I could. Okay. And what type of um, assistance did you offer? What did you actually see as you ran towards the bomb site? Um, the first thing I saw was just mass chaos. Um, there was women screaming for their husbands. There was mothers screaming for their children. There was children running around looking for parents. Um, people were scattering. It was overwhelming to see the, the people in the yellow jackets, the volunteers, the people in the white jackets, the, the medical volunteers, just surging the site in an effort to help. And um, I ran across one police officer as I tried to get through, and he says, you can't go through. I said, I'm a medic. He said, oh, okay. And, and he let me through. And um, the first young gentleman I ran across was in total shock. He had already been put into a wheelchair, but his left leg um, was in very, very bad shape. Um, and I would be amazed if, if he has kept it because um, it was so severe, the injuries. Wow, yeah. so, so I mean, obviously, did you ever think you would see something like that here? Um, you never, you, it's not something that you think about daily, but I have to admit that ever since 9-11, um, whenever I'm in a large gathering of any sort, um, the thought crosses your mind, of course it does, but you would think that in a location like the Boston Marathon, where there are individuals from every corner of the globe, that it is not one political party, it's not one um, religious 
sect. It's not. It's it's not anybody in particular. It's just a culmination of athletes, of well-wishers, of people that are here for a patriotic event, something that's gone on for over a hundred years. It just, you, you have to wonder what was the mission? Why? Why? What was there to gain by this? It was just a total act of hatred. Okay, and um, obviously your training and experience as a medic was what enabled you to, to actually get in there and help people. Yes. Um, but I understand you weren't alone. I was not alone. No, I was not alone. Um, it was my, my training as, as a Navy medic that, you know, throughout um, medical school in the Navy, you're always trained for combat situations. And what I saw that day at the finish line was, in fact, a combat situation. The, it was like a battlefield. The injuries that I witnessed, the injuries that I attended to were things that you would see, see out in Afghanistan or in Iraq. And um, the sound of that explosive is very um, identifiable to anybody who's been trained. And myself, uh, Dr. Liz Scirocco, also ran in to assist. She spent an hour or so at the medical tent, just side by side with other physicians. She did an amazing job. Uh, Tracy Logan was also with me. She stayed at the Mylar Blankets, and um, at one point they rerouted the runners, so she had to relocate herself. and. Um, you know, everybody was very brave to stand their ground, to not run in the opposite direction, um, to, to stand their post, you know, in a military manner. <laughs> um, so uh, Cindy um, Scalzo was there. She was helpful. Uh, Anna Gama was there. There was a lot of people from Hopkinton that were there um, to assist. And fortunate for them, nobody was injured. Their family members were not injured. Um, as far as I know, we didn't have any injured runners from Hopkinton. Um, you know, but that's we always look for those Hopkinton runners, and we were grateful that they were far enough away from the finish line where they weren't impacted physically. Um, how, how long were you there, and how did you eventually get back home? Um, the explosion, I believe, went off at 10 minutes to 3, 2.50, I believe. I assisted with numerous patients. Um, the final patient that I assisted with was a 20-year-old young lady, and um, she was very scared. She was very brave. Uh, she was also very injured, and she was all alone. And she asked me, please don't leave me. And I said, I won't. I won't leave you. And. Um, Sorry. It's okay. So I rode the ambulance with her to um, <clears throat> to an emergency room that I didn't even know where I was because uh, you never knew where where they were going to take, yeah, you. Gonna take you. So um, after I got her stabilized with the assistance of the medical staff, I found out I was at Tufts Medical Center, and they were just amazing absolutely amazing. They were there, they were ready, they were waiting for us. They knew exactly what was coming in to the best of the EMT's ability to diagnose on site. And um, they had her x-rayed and triaged and um, on her way to OR probably within 20 minutes of coming through the doors. Wow. So, um, so I'm not sure what time I got out of there. I remember walking out the front door and kind of in shock thinking, what just happened, and is this just a bad dream? And uh, at that point, cell phones were not working, and I knew that, you know, I was worried about my kids. I knew Brittany, Thomas, and Natalie were at home, I'm sure aware of what was taking place, and knowing that I was at the finish line, worried to death that I was okay, and I couldn't even get in touch with them. At one point, I did send Brittany a text, and she was able to let everybody know else know that I was all right, but phone calls wouldn't go through. I couldn't contact anybody else. Um, so eventually, Liz and I were able to, to get together and, and reconnect. Re connect and um, Tracy had to walk all the way from uh, Com Ave all the way back to the Renaissance on the waterfront uh, wow. because there was no public transportation running. There was not a cab to be had. Um, and Cindy and Anna were actually in lockdown at the Fairmont because it's, of its proximity to the finish line. They wouldn't let anybody in. They wouldn't let anybody out. Um, so I believe they finally came home that evening. and. Um, Tracy and Liz and I came home the following morning. 
and you know when we got back to the hotel we didn't even want to turn on the television because it was so fresh that uh, to rewatch what we had just witnessed up close and firsthand was almost too painful. Well, quite, quite an experience to, to have to go through. And um, um, I want to thank you for coming in and, and actually talking about it, because I know it can't be easy. And I also wanted to know, what do you think? Do you have a message? What do you think you've learned? How will you view the marathon going forward? Um, I guess the message that you learn is that, you know, life is very short and it is very precious. And situations such as this, unfortunately, take place more and more, um, you know, with the different shootings throughout the world, with the different, you know, like the Boston Marathon explosives. So don't take today for granted. Don't take your family for granted. Make sure you tell the people that you love, you love them. And um, oh, I'm sorry, what was your last question? What did I learn? And will, how will it affect me moving forward in the yeah. Boston Marathon? Um, we were able to talk to quite a few people after when everything calmed down. And I think we will, runners, staff, volunteers will all stay on strong and return to the Boston Marathon next year and the year after that. I will. I certainly will. This will not deter me trying to celebrate a wonderful, you know, day in, in Boston. All right. Well, Alicia Shambo, thank you very much for coming in and sharing your feelings. It's my pleasure. Thank you.